I will put, I'm putting the recording on Franco as we've discussed. Okay, so I'm giving the word to you. Yes, we can start. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Um, the subject I'm supposed to talk about uh, is, uh, is vague, whimsical, uh, but in a sense, um, I'm interested in uh, the process of subjectivation, that's my job in a sense. Uh, what do you do in life? Uh, I, I, I try to, to imagine um, strategies or tactics for, uh, um, a, for, for social subjectivation in, in the field uh, uh, of uh, politics, sometimes in the field of communication. A, and in the field of um, the, the, the psychosphere, the, the, the dimension in which uh, uh, information circulates and in which we receive uh, stimuli, aesthetic, nervous, Stimula. Um, uh, we live in a period in which uh, the problem of subjectivation is turning uh, dramatic. The, the, the process of subjectivation implies obviously uh, a relation with uh, the surrounding infosphere, the body of the others, and uh, um, the imaginary prospects of the future. And uh, now, in this moment, uh, the imagination of future is um, disturbed. Uh, and by many points of view, we can say uh, linked with a sort of pathology. Um, let, let's try to define the moment uh, we are going through. Uh, we can employ words like chaos uh, or like noise to approach uh, our subject. Um, let's look back at uh, the year 2019, autumn 2019. In, in two, three, for two, three months at the end of that year, a sort of convulsion uh, says that the the, uh, the, the planetary body, the body of millions of people from Hong Kong to Santiago de Chile, from uh, um, Barcelona to Paris, to Quito, La Paz, uh, Beirut, Baghdad, Tehran, in many places of the world, Young people, especially young people, unemployed, precarious, uh, took to the streets in, in a sort of um, chaotic movement, which in my opinion was not essentially a political movement. Uh, you see, uh, Hong Kong and Santiago de, Ch de Chile have little in common from the point of view of uh, 
the context of the pro project of the strategy, but have much in common when it comes to respiration, to a sense of suffocation, which has, um, which has permeated the psychosphere of the planet in the last years, in the last decade, um, suffocation, respiration is uh, my, my focus. Uh, what, what, what is the origin, the, gene the genesis of this the suffocation? I, I think that we have been living three, four decades of uh, permanent acceleration of the infosphere, the sphere that surrounds our mind, the sphere in which uh, information circulate as nervous uh, uh, inputs, as nervous uh, stimulations. Our brain, our mind, our mind and our brain, because it's not only a, a mental, psychological, cognitive problem, it's also a neurological um, acceleration of uh, the, the nervous stimulation. This is uh, the context in which, in the last 30 years, the years of neoliberal uh, um, regime of neoliberal economy and simultaneously the years of uh, the network of the info acceleration produ produced by, by the digital uh, communication in those two different uh, processes, the mind has been taken in, in a condition, in a social condition, which was dominated by competition, precarity, precarity of uh, labor, precarity of life. Uh, so this um, this, this competitive acceleration has led to a sort of uh, a, of mutation of uh, of the psychosphere, which uh, we might describe in metaphorical terms, if you want, but not only in metaphorical terms as an effect of suffocation. 2019, let's go back to that year. Uh, I, I remember three movies that I saw in, in uh, the second part of 2019. Three movies that have captured uh, the the zeitgeist, if you want, but also the, the common perception, the common perception. These three, mov the, the three movies, uh, probably all of you heard about them or many of you saw those movies. One is uh, uh, Ken Loach, uh, sorry, we, Miss you, a movie about the, the penetration of information technology into the, the daily life of precarious workers as a sort of constant control, of constant uh, uh, push to work more and more speedily. Um, then, of course, 
the Todd Phillips uh, Joker. I like that movie. I uh, enormously like the Joaquin Phoenix in that movie. And, uh, and the, the movie is um, recording a, a process of mental collapse, uh, which is uh, so crucial to, to understand what is happening, for instance, in the United States now. You cannot understand the United States if you don't think to the, to the massive uh, diffusion of oxycontin, of fentanyl, of opioid uh, drugs uh, that uh, are linked to, to the mental condition of the white male senescent population of that country. That country is on the brink of a disintegration, in my opinion. Uh, because, first of all, because of um, the, the widespread psychopathology that is an effect of a, a, a converging effect of uh, economic competition, aggressive economic competition, impoverishment, uh, humiliation, economic and social humiliation, and uh, on the other side, permanent stimulation of uh, the suprematism the instinct, which is not only a, 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 racist, a racist, uh, uh, sentiment, but also the effect of a, a social condition of humiliation. So I think that Joker is capturing well that kind of mental chaos that is uh, the, the background of uh, the, the political dementia of our time uh, and uh, might become the, 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 the cause uh, of the geopolitical chaos that, uh, in my opinion, will follow the the, the disintegration of the United States. The third movie is Parasite by uh, the Korean director Bong Yon hoo uh, Parasite, uh, which is an, an, a beautiful movie from the point of view of uh, the perception huh, of the creation of a perceptual style. Uh, Parasite uh, is uh, um, about uh, the, 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 the inability to create links, to, 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 to live. Uh, a, the, the social link as a link of solidarity. The, the final um, uh, uh, dissipation, disintegration of uh, solidarity. Uh, and um, in a sense, uh, those three movies uh, are about the, the suffocation and following a convulsion, convulsion. The convulsion of a body is when a body is, uh, is on the brink of the collapse and tries to reactivate uh, uh, energies. Uh, uh, and the uh, convulsion uh, may lead, and in our case, led to the collapse. I see the pandemics, uh, in a sense, uh, as a 
predictable collapse of the social organism uh, after the convulsive years of, uh, uh, of the neoliberal dictatorship. Um, Félix Guattari, a French philosopher and psychoanalyst that you may possibly know, uh, um, uh, Guattari died in 1992. And in the last year of his life, he published a book titled Chaos Moses, which in my opinion is a, a a good introduction to the condition in which we are now. Cosmosis is, um, those of you who know Guattari and the works that Guattari published together with Deleuze, uh, know, those of you who know Guattari are acquainted about his uh, philosophical style. Um, General, he was a, a, an energetic uh, a, a person and an energetic writer. Um, but in that book, uh, Cosmos, uh, he has uh, like uh, the, the premonition of, of something was a uh, happening uh, not only in the economic and political dimension, but also in the psychological uh, uh, dimension. He spoke in that book, uh, he writes uh, about uh, what he calls uh, a cosmic spasm. What he says, um, we are entering dark times times of cosmic spasm. So first of all, why in 1992? Uh, the, the signs were in the air, if you want. 1992, you know, is uh, a, a, a bright moment in the history of human culture. The beginning of the internet, in 1992, I started using the browser Netscape in order to uh, travel, navigate uh, in, uh, in the new uh, uh, the new space, in the new sphere of the internet. But in the same period, some uh, signs were announcing a, a, a dark side of the neoliberal age. Uh, think of uh, the Yugoslav War, 91, 92, 93, until 99, a, a nationalist war bringing back on the European scene the, the violence of uh, the culture of belonging, of the, cul of the nationalist uh, um, uh, culture, fascism was back uh, on, the, on the scene of uh, Europe. <coughs> In uh, summer 1992, in Rio de Janeiro, there was the first summit on the global warming, on the climate change. 92, in 92, already it was possible to have a perception of the dangerous transformation of the atmosphere of uh, water, air, and earth. So, the power, the, 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 the potencies of the, the countries of the world met in Rio de Janeiro to discuss the problems of uh, emissions and of limitation of, well, you know what? 
In that occasion, the president of the United States, George Bush, the father, said the, the, the life style of the American people is not negotiable. This assertion, I remember I spoke about that declaration with Felix Guattari, and he told me, this is a declaration of war against the humankind. And uh, actually, since that moment, I got aware that uh, uh, between the American culture and the human survival, there is a, a, an incompatibility. If America leaves, the humankind is, is doomed. So this is why I'm not so unhappy for the disintegration, the, the present disintegration of the United States, uh, uh, even if it's too late. Uh, anyway, um, so what he speaks in that year, a threshold, to that, that period I see between 89 and 93, between the collapse of the Berlin Wall and the Yugoslav War and the beginning of the internet. In those years, I see we have been passing a threshold. Like now, I think. I think now we are in a threshold. We are passing through, through a threshold. Anyway, in that book, 1992, Felix Watari speaks of cosmic spasm. We are going through a cosmic, what is a spasm? Spasm is a medical term that uh, refers to a body, a tissue, a muscle, a, an, an organism which is taken by a sort of uh, acceleration of the bodily rhythm up to the point that uh, the organism can, uh, can uh, suffocate or collapse spasm. But what he speaks of chaosmic spasm. Chaos and chaos moments. What is chaos? Well, obviously, the spasm is a, a chaotic effect uh, for the organism when the organism enters in a condition of chaos, of ingovernability, and of hypermobilization. We can speak of a spasm. But what? Chaos means? What is the meaning of the word chaos? I think that we can say that chaos does not exist in nature, in the reality, in the outside reality. Chaos is nowhere. Chaos is in the relation between human perception and velocity of the the, the processes that are deploying in nature, in uh, society, in information. Chaos is a measure of uh, the uh, relation between brain and environment in psychological terms and in terms of speed. Speed is crucial if we want to understand the, the, the spasm. What has happened in the, in the decades of the digital mutation is essentially a, in, in acceleration, a change in speed that is provoking an effect of overcharge of the mind and 
is provoking an effect of uh, ingovernability of uh, the surrounding uh, environment, uh, uh, governing uh, or uh, uh, um, understanding in a practical way implies uh, a, a, a relation, a rhythm of uh, collaboration uh, that has been jeopardized by the, the, um, the digital acceleration. Here, you know, here uh, I, I see that we are facing uh, a, a difficult problem of evolution because politically speaking, uh, we want uh, something uh, and we may have uh, the power, the potency to enact our projects. Uh, but this is happening less and less. We are less and less able to uh, to govern reality. This is chaos. Chaos is uh, uh, an environment in which our ability to reduce cognitively and politically a reality, uh, to reduce reality to our understanding and to our will uh, is uh, is um, Chaos is when disability escapes us, when we lose the ability of uh, uh, consistently understanding and governing. So, Mattari says uh, the spasm is a chaotic condition for the organism and for the mind. And this chaotic condition depends on a change, on an acceleration, on a transformation of the rhythm of the surrounding infosphere. So what? So first of all, we go through a sort of uh, uh, suffering. The, the spasm is uh, painful. Uh, and what should we do? Should we wage war against chaos? Uh, those who wage war against chaos lose because the chaos is feeding on war. So you see the war on drugs of the president, uh, uh, of the American president Nixon Bush, uh, and um, every American pre president is waging war against the drugs. And you see the results, the, the drug market has become a sort of uh, uh, unwinnable corporation. Uh, look at Mexico, look at uh, the, the circulation of, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Or uh, think to, um, George Bush uh, Jr. waging war against terrorism. Uh, the effect has been a, a multiplication of wars and of defeats and of uh, uh, civil wars. And I mean, uh, waging war against chaos is stupid. And in another book titled What is Philosophy, uh, that Guattari wrote together with uh, uh, Deleuze, they speak about chaos, chaos and, and the brain. And they say, should we think that chaos is a, a, an enemy, a foe? Uh, absolutely not, because chaos is both an enemy and a friend and then Nali, we must make friends with chaos. That is the point. 
How can we make friends with cows? It's a problem of rhythm. I mean, making friends with cows uh, implies the ability of uh, perceiving the, the new um, the new rhythm of vibration of uh, the surrounding reality. So let's go back to the present, um, the pandemic age. I said before that the confusion happened in autumn 2019, and the confusion prepared the collapse. In 2020, we have experienced it. We are experiencing the collapse, the collapse uh, in uh, daily life, in, uh, in the economy, uh, in the geopolitical uh, balance, uh, um, a collapse uh, in, in the environmental prospects. But most of all, in my opinion, a collapse in the uh, of of the of the mind of the social mind. Um, can we speak of a collective unconscious? I think we should not, or not only in the sense of Carl Gustav Jung, who, as you know. Uh, wrote many things about the idea of a collective unconscious that is linked to our uh, past, to our memories, to the mythological dimension of our um, past, um, interesting things. But I, I prefer to use the expression collective unconscious in order to map the present transformation of the mind. And uh, I think that, first of all, the pandemic's collapse has acted as a psycho deflection. Deflection, you know, the, the, the sudden deceleration, the sudden um, break in the process of uh, acceleration. So, um, all of a sudden, the, the um, uh, coherence, the consistency of the global machine went broken. And I think that it will never recover. The economy will not recover. The capitalist economy has been dead for many years now. It's, it's uh, official. Uh, so, uh, first of all, the psycho deflation, then the, the long lasting experience of social dis distancing and of uh, phobic sensibilization to the body of the other. That is what is happening now. We know that the body of the other is dangerous. We know that approaching the body of the other is dangerous. And this is working deep in the collective unconscious, particularly of the young generation, of course, but not only, believe me. This is, uh, this is producing an effect uh, that we have to understand, analyze, and map the present. When the ministry, uh, the Canadian Ministry of, of Health declares, uh, as she did one month ago, she said, uh, skip kisses. And in case of having sex, do not forget to wear a sanitary mask. I think she was doing the right thing. She was uh, uh, 
cautioning people against the danger of contagion, but I don't care about it. I'm not a judge. I don't care about what is uh, right, what is wrong. I care about what is uh, the effect, the mutation, the deep transformation that this uh, trauma is producing uh, uh, on the on the collective unconscious. This is my my focus at the present. And I think that we have to act on it with many, uh, I mean, as artists or as uh, psychoanalysts uh, and also as political activists. I think that we have to be aware of the different levels of the present passage in, uh, in subjectivity, in the process of subjectivation. Um, I say that uh, um, chaos is about rhythm, uh, the rhythm of uh, the uh, of the environment. The virus has um, um, provoked uh, a sort of short circuit between many levels of uh, the um, of the psychic and social uh, condition. So, in in we have to learn from the virus. We have to uh, to remember that. The virus is essentially chaos and uh, you should not wage war against chaos. You should understand it. You should find a different treatment for, uh, for uh, subjectivity in order to synchronize, tune in uh, uh, with, with chaos and with the virus. I think that poetical activity is all about that. Is um, of course, um, if you want to speak about poetry, you know, you can imagine that poetry is also, like Freud said, sublimation, a, a way to uh, to to live, uh, to share in intensity that you cannot share in, in an erotic way, in, in a sexual way, pardon me, because poetry is part of eros. So sublimation is a, is, a, is a dimension of poetical activity, but I think it's not enough. I like sublimation, but please, Let's think about, about the present change in terms of a, of, a, of a transformation also for the sexual organ, for, for our sexuality. And uh, Eros is sad, of course, Eros is sad because because now we are living in a condition in which uh, the, 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 the erotic dimension is, uh, is shadowed, uh, obscured by, by what I call phobic sensibilization, fear, if you want. But we must act on it we must find new ways of imagining and obviously of living the relation among bodies. That's a long um, task, a long work to do because I think that the pandemic condition is not a, 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 an insulated event. It is much more a, a, 
a level, a plateau uh, of uh, of the of the present uh, of the present chaos. Well, I I, I beg your pardon because I. I tried to say many things in, in 40 minutes. So maybe I've been confused, but I am confused. So it's not so strange that I look confused. Um, because, uh, because we are in a trash and we don't know really what's going to, to to happen beyond the threshold. Um, you know, you can say that this experience, the experience of the convulsion of precarization, of exploitation, and, the, and also the experience of the pandemics uh, cannot uh, bring good things to our future. But I am not sure of that. We have been living inside the corpse for many years, the corpse of capitalism. Because capitalism is dead. The old good capitalism of growth uh, is uh, out of the picture. But uh, capitalism wants eternal life. And the only way has been uh, intoxicating the life of the planet and the life of the human organism. So uh, maybe this transition is hard and dark, but I think that this uh, transition beyond the threshold, we can become able to do something that we have been unable to do for uh, the in in the past uh, in the past decades coming out of the corpse of capitalism thank you thank you franco thank uh, you this is us from nicosia we have uh, some problem uh, with our camera so uh, let's continue with audio maybe uh so no, 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 it's, there is a problem with the camera. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so um, my question is like, you speak a lot about body and use like bodily metaphors. Um, and also you spoke and wrote a lot about collective body. Like when you, for example, wrote and spoke about the protests of uh, 2011 and 2012, you mentioned that it lacked like a collective body. And like, what do you think, like it's clear that what is going now uh, with the collective body and collective unconscious is a traumatic experience. And um, basically what we were trying to experience with during like these weeks during the academy was to think of um, as the title is sound and touch and touch nowadays is something dangerous and problematic uh, in the era of pandemic. So we were thinking how sound as a part of uh, the body, like because it's like like it's like a almost part of the body, how sound can be like come in place um, to like not instead of touch, but at least like to play the role of touch or like to be the connection or that's something that unite unites the bodies like in the times when physical touch is problematic. So yeah, I don't know what would you say about that and <laughs> do you have any well, comments do you have any comments on that idea and do you think like what could be the ways to tune in yeah. um with chaos uh, in the current situation like could it be voice well, yes um voice? let's think to the recent and ongoing american insurrection what has happened since May after the murder, the public execution of George Floyd. Um, you know what has happened in the day, in the days uh, after the killing, uh, Minneapolis uh, on fire, 
then many, many cities of uh, the United States have been um, invaded by march of thousands of people. You know all the story. But I have tried to imagine a sort of telepathic uh, um, meeting of millions of young people, black, Latinos, uh, precarious, white precarious worker, young uh, proletarians of the metropolis uh, of the United States. I imagine a huge meeting among them. They, they know that uh, they, they, they watch in the TV the assassination of uh, uh, George Floyd. They, they feel, that they understand what the meaning of that. The Ku Klux Klan has identified with the American police, that that is, that is uh, clear, crystal clear, um, and uh, they know that uh, it's dangerous to reply because the police is going to kill again, because the fascists, the supremacists, are going to kill again, and they know that uh, going to in the, into the streets uh, is going to be dangerous, also and mostly because of the virus, they know that. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, they decide to go out of their uh, house, of their cages, and uh, to start uh, a, a, a long uh, insurrection. Think of Portland, 100 nights, uh, stay together, stay tight, we do it every night. Why did they do that? I think that in, in that uh, telepathic uh, meeting, they also said, if we stay home now, if we do not react now, we are going to pay it with an epidemic of depression. We are going to pay it with thousands of suicidal cases of depression, panic crises are exploding in the United, in, in the young population of the United States, suicide among people between 18 and 29 years, suicide has quadrupled in, in the last year in Italy. So they, the, the American, uh, young people have uh, perceived the need of insurrection as the only way to heal, as the one only way to to reactivate the the the, the body, the social body, mm -hmm. and the body means also you know, uh, clearly the imagination, the, the mind. Um, so the second question that you ask is about uh, um, how to reactivate mm -hmm. the, the body and the place of uh, language in it, or the place of poetry in it. Um, obviously, I say poetry, but I mean a, a, a constellation of symbolic practices. I see poetry at the same level of schizoanalysis, of psychoanalysis, of creation of places for uh, self uh, uh, therapy. Uh, Poetry is uh, an experimentation in, in, in respiration. It is this. It's an attempt to find a, a rhythm of respiration which is able to interpret 
a, a situation, a sentiment, a, a, a fear, a desire, a possibility. Um, and when we speak of language, we are not speaking of something that happens uh, only at the level of uh, semiotic exchange. When we say language, we are speaking of the bridge that we are continuously creating on the, on the reality of, uh, of the non-existence of meaning. We know that reality has no meaning. We know that we, we live in a dimension that is chaotic in itself. But we continuously create uh, linguistic, imaginary uh, pathways. And we can trust those linguistic bridges because we walk on them in solidarity with the body of the other. It's because we go hand in hand that we can bridge, that we can can walk on a bridge, on the abyss uh, of the absence of meaning. I think that uh, the experience that we are living now is really an experience of uh, um, looking at the eyes of the nihilist beast. We are seeing the presence of uh, nothing. We are leaving a process of becoming nothing. Mm -hmm. That is back at the center of the stage that, that has been denied by, by modern culture and particularly by, by postmodern capitalist culture. That is back. That is our um, our perception and and poetry is uh, you know poetry is a way to make chaos aesthetically livable aesthetically pleasurable aesthetically meaningful that is the 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 task of poetry. Poetry is the way to make friends with chaos. <laughs> yeah. It seems uh, like you are describing a process of uh, bridging a bridging the abyss of chaos, the abyss of the absence of meaning yeah. through the relationships you create with language and the other. Um, it seems like poetry is a way of communicating. Right. Or Poetry is a way to reactivate meaning in a condition of chaos. Mm -hmm. Meaning is our invention. Uh, Hölderlin says, signs we are without interpretation. There is no interpreted, true interpretation of reality. There is not, no pathway. There is no truth. Uh, there is no meaning. Poetry is the activity of creating an aesthetic perception of meaning. When I say aesthetic, I am referring to something that is not only art, is not only referring to art. Uh, when I say aesthetic, I refer to perception, of course, and I refer to imagination, to, uh, to the ability to imagine a different uh, constellation of, uh, of science and a different 
rhythmic relation between our organism and the environment. I will, I will ask the participants now in the room if uh, there are like any more questions. Yeah, you can come, just come closer to the microphone. Hi, um, my name is Ben and I'm from London and uh, I live in London usually. And I really appreciated your essay, uh, your writing about the Tottenham riots and the English riots in 2011. Can, can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Great. Um, so I was just thinking, um, because I, I was inspired by the riots to, to make a film which sort of started with the text that was sent by the rioters, one, one of the rioters in um, August, just after the rioters, the, the riots began. And they said in the kind of language that's used by people who live in North London, who live in London, um, deadly ends and color war for now, if you see a fed salute, uh, sorry, if you see um, um, a friend salute, if you see a fed shoot. So if you see a, yeah, I guess that's fairly clear, right? Dead the end is like means um, death or dead, suspend the neighborhoods because the competition in the neighborhood is organized around postcodes and neighborhoods, right? So different bits of the proletariat fighting against each other um, for hegemony. Um, and uh, the riots sort of begin with this declaration, like no more competition between each of our different neighborhoods and uh, a war against the police. So you no longer fight each other, you fight the police. So if you see a fed, fed means police, shoot. If you see a friend, salute. Uh, and yeah, dead the ends and color war. So like um, basically color war, race is over. So they're basically saying whether you're white, black, brown, whatever kind of proletarian, um, you are now all on the same side. So, you know, I thought this was the most advanced piece of poetry, uh, if you like. Or yeah. Of, of that thank you huh thank you for... yeah. well there you go yeah so I, I thought you might like that um but i'm curious how do you see poetry and relating to the poetry let's say of the riot where you do have as, as you were saying with the uprising um for george floyd you have a massive like you say almost telepathic organization by proletarians and um i i tend to see it as going beyond the official language of ngos and uh, civil society and not what, what was seen as normal politics and actually like a vanguard of something new, like a new, more more ambitious expression. Um, would you see that? Would you agree with that? And do you see that as a moment of the making friends with chaos, if you like? Long question. But. Well, if you, if you, if I understand, uh, uh, you're asking me what is the role of poetry in riots, more or less. And uh, I would say that riots are poetry. Riots are poetry. Um, it's, I know it's rhetoric, it sounds empty, but I, I mean, the, 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 when we say poetry, we say an attempt to, uh, to, uh, uh, to reactivate energies. So I think that people, do not go, uh, do not take the streets because they think that there is a sort of political power there, but because they know that this is the only way to rebuild that kind of solidarity that uh, has been broken. That is, uh, in this sense, uh, I see an analogy that may be metaphorical as you want, uh, an analogy between psychotherapy, poetry, and insurrection. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. We have another question. Just come closer. Uh, I find, uh, uh, again, I find a very... Um, I'm, I'm, Time. No, I'm, I'm. He's exhausted. Um, Are you have... Yes. Maria. Yes. Maria? Yes. Sorry. I have, I have a small problem. I'm a little bit deaf. Okay. Uh -huh. yes. I don't see the faces of people oh. who are talking to me. Yeah. 
it's very difficult for me to understand, especially uh, London's English. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my English is very American, better. It's very Napolitan, as you see. So. There we oh, go. No, we yes. have the cover is working, <laughs> so we fixed it. <laughs> yeah, just. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh. No. I'm sorry, Mister. No, don't worry. <laughs> Okay. okay, I have I, I have a question you um about chaos. Um, there is a, a very cl close resemblance uh, of what you say with uh, some scientific point of view uh, in uh, the systems theory. So complex adaptive systems, which can be societies or organisms in general, uh, you seem to express uh, the way that a compl complex adaptive system works in your theory. You seem to express that, where there is a moment of craziness and chaos, and it's called the bifurcation process. And from that chaos, uh, a new system, uh, a more adapted system to the new reality emerges. And it seems uh, you are saying that this platform, which is the virus, could be that moment where we can grab uh, uh, the opportunity, let's say. Uh, you know, I, I know that in, in the last uh, decades, uh, there is a, a a, a school of thought uh, named the uh, chaos theory, uh, which is working exactly on, on this idea of uh, new synchronization with chaos, chaos as a condition of uh, uh, hyper complexification of reality. But I think that since uh, uh, the past century, um, in uh, I think in the 40s, in the, in the 50s, uh, Thomas Kuhn wrote a, a, an important book titled The Structure of, um, of Scientific Revolutions. In that book, he is saying exactly what you 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 mentioned before he says that chaos is scientifically speaking is a condition that we can no more explain interpret and interact with according to the the existing paradigm there is a problem he says of paradigm a, a, a different key for the interpretation of reality makes possible a new understanding of what uh, has been defined as chaos. Totally, um, I totally agree. And the point is that uh, you're right, that's the same. The same model of imagining a transition. Thomas Kuhn in his book, uh, is outlining an epistemological transition thanks to a different paradigm we can give meaning to 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 chaos in the same vein i say that poetry is an attempt to find a different rhythmic paradigm mm. for our life in relation with the environment uh, of cows. Thank you. I think that Thank I go to bed now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.